and I'm a postdoc in Asia in Taiwan. It's really good to see you all, all here and in a wonderful place and uh, in a wonderful workshop. And today I'm happy to show our very recent detection of the single pulse from the first. So this is uh, related to the Kaiyang and Su House uh, report uh, this morning. So our first station have a multiple auricular station. So, um, and one of them uh, is main, our main station with 256 antenna and the other one is, which is also fully operating, uh, the Nanto with 64 magnetic electric antennas. So the upcoming results is from these both two stations. So we are doing the real-time informing at each station, and uh, for the main array, we will also perform the real-time pulse search. So it will have a 16 by 16 beams, and all of the beams will be streamed to the real-time search pipeline to search the FRB with a DM up to about 1,000 per second cubic centimeter. So we are, as I mentioned, the two whole entire beams will be streamed to uh, the pipeline so we can cover the wide field up in the sky at once, which will uh, about to uh, over 10,000 square degree. So this is an example of our beam response for the crab pulsar. And uh, as you can see, um, the, the different sky position have a different uh, beam response for um, among the 256 beams. And we confirmed that our actual uh, detection of the, the actual observation is consistent with this simulated beam response. So this only shows the main beam response, but we expect that we can also cover, uh, make up for the beam-to-beam -beam region and also wider field of view by allowing the side log search. So this is one of our plans. And um, the real-time search pipeline is still uh, being investigated for fine tuning to make a reliable results and have a lesser, less false trigger. But uh, not only for the relying on the real time pipeline, we also doing the offline search. So this is our first detection of the uh, the single pulses from the pulsar O329, and this is from the offline search, not from the real time. Uh, and we can observe for five days per night for these pulsars. And um, uh, I mean. Yeah, we got multiple uh, single pulse from this pulsar in this night, and uh, we just confirmed that our real-time pipeline can also detect uh, this pulse from the offline search, but still with a lot of false triggers, so still the optimi optimization of the, uh, the bonsai code is still ongoing. And I'm so happy that we also got the crab giant pulse a few days ago, so this is from our, uh, also from the offline search, from our three-day, uh, three-night observation, and uh, this is uh, this plot is showing the strongest giant pulse that we detected from uh, just a few days ago. So it will be a great sample for our uh, fine tuning for our pipeline. And this is other uh, detections from for, from the same night. So on average, we think we can get over at least three to four giant pulse per night. And um, I, I think I should mention that uh, our frequency weak, weak signal in this waterfall at around 600 megahertz is attributed to the TV signal, um, which is mitigated before our um, real-time and offline search. So this is as a sample of other things. And um, I'm, I want to emphasize that we are really close to the FRB detection with using burst. And the, I'm showing you then because uh, it is not because it is very cute. Oh, actually, it's very cute, but I think the first is quite similar to Mudeng. So we are still in a very early phase in the FRD facilities in the world, but we are going to be advanced and much bigger, like Mudeng will be, but it will be much sooner than Mudeng will uh, get grown. So um, the, as I mentioned, the optimization and of, of performance and the pipeline will make us have a, I mean, regular detection of the FRD, and uh, burst 2010 will also make the Nearby, I have already much advanced. So stay tuned, please, and thank you.